Broadcasting Building in Provo as we welcome you to another edition of our weekly get together with the head coach of the Cougars. We'd love to have you join us here at Studio C. Just go to byucougars.com slash sitake show on the day of or the day before the show to save your seats. And we invite you to be a part of our show on Twitter using the hashtag Satake Show. Send your questions in for Kalani and Johnny Linehan, and you may get your submission on the air this very evening. All we need to make this coach's show a coach's show is a coach. Let's bring on out the head coach, the Cougars, Kalani Satake. Hello, sir. See you again. Still too close, the camera. <laughs> How you doing? I got some feedback on your hat last week. People like this. Yeah, I think it's going to be in bookstores pretty soon, and then the BYU bookstore. So I'm just uh, being the model for it right now. Who came up with that design? Uh, I think uh, Dave Broberg did. So yeah, I like it. It's a, it's black and hides my face, and so it's perfect. <laughs> Dave's the school's uh, graphic design uh, yes. chief, and he uh, does a lot of great work. And uh, yeah, people wanted people wondered where they could get that, and you see maybe they might be able to get it pretty soon. Then. Yeah, I think it's coming soon, and, and Dave's done a great job with uh, a lot of our a lot of our um, gear and and with the uh, repping and always repping the Y and stuff like that. So he's done an amazing job, and uh, everyone at BYU does a great job at, at you know getting the gear out there, and and I like it because it's free, so I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful day for practice today, although you were inside. It's a shorts day again for the coach. Yeah, well, I'm going to wear shorts as much as possible, and then I was running a little late. I, I tried to dress up and put slacks on, but uh, this is how it is for me most of the time. Even if it was snowing, I'd rather be in shorts. The calves have to breathe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> So we're coming in looking to get off the, uh, uh, get off the schneid, as they say, uh, in, at East Carolina this weekend. Uh, it's, you know, no, nobody foresees this kind of struggle coming. How do you think everyone from players to coaches are, are dealing with it right now? Good. I mean, I, as, as, as well as I, um, I can hope for, you know, and, and uh, I, th I think the, um, the leaders have done a great job of keeping the team together. And I, I, th I feel like I keep saying the same thing over and over again, but um, you know, it's it's uh, we've gone through some adversity, and we didn't predict this. And I don't think a lot of people thought this was going to happen this year. And definitely disappointed. But um, the only way you get out of it is to to work hard and to trust each other and believe in each other. And that's what we're going to try to focus on. And um, you know, there's still a lot of football to pl be played, and uh, and a lot left in the season, a lot to be a lot to play for. So uh, you know, we want our guys to, to enjoy every moment. Um, but you know, it's it's about time we get get a, a one in the win, win column. When times are tough like this, is it more work for the coaches beyond the simple X's and O's at this point? Yeah, I, but I think it's, um, you still have to be smart with the stuff you do. I mean, I, I really believe that you look at the positives that you have and, and some of the growth that you've made as a team and some of the things that you get. I mean, obviously we have to, you know, getting Tanner back in the mix and he's moving a lot better and then it seems to get better and better every week we go. But um, there's a lot of other things that we, that are positive that are out there. And, the number one is our players' effort, effort and, and they're willing to just buy in to what we ask them to. So, you know, as coaches, we need to find ways to, to have success in the field because the players are giving us everything they can. And, and um, it's really on us and on me and this coaching staff to make it work and, and, and get the guys that have success in the field and then try to get, the, get a win. What are you leaning on right now? What's giving you the most uh, strength or hope or confidence as you go day to day? Well, I mean, get a lot of support from BYU fans. That helps always, you know. And and um, uh, you know, I, I I'm always open to positive reinforcement as well as criticism. So I'm okay with it. But it's been nice to have a lot of good mentors out there reach out to me. And you know, I, I think I mentioned the press conference, Andy Reid, and and other coaches that have just reached out and just say, hey, you can get get through this. And um, everyone goes through some adversity. And this uh, obviously it's not predicted, but we we have to face it now, and we have to learn from it. And, I think there's a saying that success sometimes doesn't teach you things, you know. And so we've learned a lot through this adversity, and I'm pretty much done learning now. So <laughs> that's, that's just, I think I think we've learned enough. I mean, that's so just letting adversity know that, that, that this is it's time to get get winning. And and uh, but we're I mean I'm enjoying the, the young men that I get to work with and the people that are involved with BYU and football and around the fans. So um, although it's it's been disappointing with the results of the games, I. I'm loving every second being with these with these guys and being part of this team and my role as a head coach and I love seeing the fans everywhere and so uh, that doesn't change you know that that's going to be the same whether we are undefeated or, or the record that we have now and 
uh, we'll be consistent in that, in that in that part of it. But uh, we definitely want to get through this and, and want to get better. And I feel like we've learned quite a bit. And um, like I said, we just we want to win now. Well, last week you were in uh, Starkville. This week you're in Greenville. Let's take a look back quickly at the Mississippi State game. BYU Falls 35-10 uh, uh, down there in Starkville. And uh, this was a, a, a 7-0 game after the first quarter. Still a pretty manageable game. Nick Fitzgerald, heck of a player at quarterback for them. You saw what he could do his previous season, and he was just that much better this time around. Yeah, it look, looked a lot bigger. I mean, and um, I think he's a lot more comfortable with, with the way he can run. And, um, you know, I thought Diane did a great job getting out of those those drives with some picks, but picked them twice. Yeah, yeah just uh, just not enough big plays for us, and, and uh, you know, just uh, we gave up way too many on on our and especially defensively, and then but the, the, you know, blame for the loss goes on on all three phases, and obviously on on our coaching staff and myself. So that's the guys played hard, and we had some fans out there, and it was good to see them, and so. Uh, but, you know, we didn't do enough to, to really be competitive and to win that game. You see that number at the bottom there. Your, uh, your defense was on the field an awful lot uh, down there on a hot, humid day. Yeah, and, and it, it causes us to go into some, into some depth, you know, but um, that's part of college football. And, um, you know, our guys aren't complaining about it. They just, it's another opportunity to keep playing and get more reps. And uh, so, yeah, we just, you know, we just appreciate the reps that you get, and hopefully you can make them, make them work and, and get off the field. It's not like uh, the, the offense hung them out to dry the whole time. A defense had opportunities to get out of drives with third downs. You know, there, there are quite a few third and longs that, that they, didn't, they didn't get off the field. And so um, it goes both ways, and defense understands that. I think a lot of scrutiny and, and spotlight ends up on the offense, even by myself sometimes, you know, but uh, we, we win and lose as a team. We saw the Aleva Hifo touchdown catch. That makes it an 18-point game late third. Ensuing kickoff, you guys get a shot in the arm. And at that point, we may see it. Uh, when, when you recover this fumbled kickoff, you're now looking at the end of the third quarter, a chance to make this thing a two-score game once again. And the team was turned on. Mickelson puts the helmet on the ball. Akili just put in on special teams minutes before, I think, makes the recovery. Now it feels like it's a, it's a game again. Yeah, and then we're in good, in good, in good position to score, you know. And, and uh, fortunately, we weren't able to put put any points on the on the scoreboard. And um, that was, I believe, towards the end of the third quarter, going right. to the fourth quarter. And uh, you know, if we were able to get some points, I mean, it's, you play the what if game and and shoulda, couldas, but it, it just didn't work out, you know. And, and uh, we felt like there there was a, a chance to to get back into it, even with some of the the problems that we faced in the game, and to have that opportunity to be. You know, we're down three scores and have a chance to score a touchdown or a field goal would have been would have been nice to get in the game and find some momentum. So the two picks from Diane and that fumble uh, recovery gave you three takeaways and put the offense on Mississippi State's side of the field three times. Of those three possessions, just the one score, and, that, and that's a hard thing to overcome when you're not scoring on those good positions. Yeah, I mean that's that's uh, yeah so it makes it difficult, but um, yeah, we we need to find ways and be creative and. Um, as coaches and have have success, we we, we got to find a way to get get points. And um, I, I said last week that you can't win a lot of games with seven points, and it's, it's hard to win with ten points as well. So the goal is to get a lot of points this weekend, you know, and and whatever it takes. And we have we have we have the cap we have guys that are capable of doing it. And we see we just got to string along the success after success and play by play, and uh, do it slowly and, and and try to sustain it throughout the game and. and and that'll give us a chance to win. Well, ECU's a team giving up a lot of points. We'll uh, see how you do against the Pirates this Saturday. We'll talk about ECU coming up in a bit. We're taking our first break, and as we do, we want you to know that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet. Dinner Monday through Wednesday, a kitchen and a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the Residence in Marriott in Provo. When we come back, more from Kalani as we look ahead to the Cougars and their trip to the Carolinas. This is BYU Football with Kalani Tatake. No matter what stage you're at in life, you're always looking to take the next step forward. At Deseret First Credit Union, we want to take each and every next step with you. With low auto loan rates, you can be ready to see what's around every new corner and amazing rates on home mortgages, so you can move up to something you've always dreamed of. Deseret First Credit Union, with you every financial step of the way. Membership and eligibility required. Equal housing lender. Cougar Nation, are you watching? It's the spirit of game day. The roar of 64,000 fans. 
It's the echo of greatness, the thunder of new beginnings. This is our house, our field, our team. And they are not ready for us. This is Brigham Young University. How often do you get the chance to make something like this happen in someone's life? been so surprised in my life. <laughs> Envy. Watch BYU Sports Nation on BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. I didn't think that would go public. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is presented by Ken Garf Nissan of Orem, a proud supporter of BYU and the Cougar community. We hear Cougs. Guns it, picked off, Grant Jones, right across the middle. Tosses it up, it is hot. BYU has it, Fred Warner. We are back for BYU football with Kalani Sitake. Every Tuesday night, we are live right here in Studio C at BYU TV. So uh, Corbin Kafusi talked yesterday in his press conference about the final six games of the season being kind of a new phase, if not a new season, a new phase of the season, and the chance to win out and get yourself back to a postseason. How much is that kind of front half, back half, win out mentality kind of percolating through the group right now? Well, I mean, it, it's you, know, you want to focus one game at a time, but um, you also want to be real with, with the guys and let them know that they know our backs are against the ball. and There, there really is no room for error, you know, here. And so... Um, it, it, when you're backed up against the wall, you really have uh, a couple of choices. One's to fold or, or the other one's to fight back and not literally fight, but, you know, just, just, just to come back. And, and that's what we're going to try to do. You know, we're going to fight back and we have a room full of guys that are, just, that, that are in it for the fight and we're going to go to the bitter end, you know. And right now we're looking at the schedule and just knowing that we need to, I'm, I, I like to just win the next one. Try to get two before you worry about the other the other five you know so we're focused on ECU as a team but uh, we know the full schedule we know what's at stake here and um, I like the way our guys are responding right now and the leaders taking over and it's been that way all season you know just the disappointing part is actually the games and then the score and, and then the result that we're that we're not used to and we're not expecting there are some opportunities for you on the back half of the schedule as it shows and and hopefully the front portion of the season has toughened you up even as it's toughened you up you've lost a lot of people too it's been a rough uh, first half of the season for you too physically, hasn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I've said before that, that injuries are part of football and, and, um, and uh, you know, we have capable players that are willing to give everything they have and, and as coaches, we just need to find ways to give those guys a chance to, to, to succeed. And, and obviously you'd like to go into the season with the same guys the entire game, the entire season, and, and, um, but it, it's, a, it's a physical game and it's, it's, it's violent at times and so, um, the bad part about it is we've, we've even lost guys in, in practice, you know, but um, that's, uh, I hate saying, talking about injuries and using that as a, as a reason why we're not performing well. We're, we, we, we have guys that are behind that that are, give you all the effort and have talent, and so we need to be able to, I don't want to diminish those guys because those guys are working really hard and, and, uh, and we're seeing some success. We just need to see more of it. Both teams Saturday equally desperate. Uh, ECU is one and six as well, so you're kind of in the same boat, and both kind of need the same thing on the same night here. Yeah, so uh, one of us is going to get their second wind, you know, and before. So, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know they they had a tough schedule too. Going they played ranked teams like you have. Yeah, so yeah. it's I mean I, I watched them against Virginia Tech, and they were in that game from the you know for the first half, and, and they, they've they've 
they've shown some great athleticism as a team and, and some speed and you know it's just it's uh, it's going to be a good matchup we go to their home and then our being in the east coast we're going to travel a little earlier you know and uh, just looking forward to seeing our fans out there to support us and and playing a team that we think you know we have a lot of respect for and, and we know they're going through similar battles right now so uh, one of us is going to come out the victor and uh, I feel good about our chances. Now, they, they really do struggle on defense, uh, but they can move it, especially through the air. You see they're averaging better than 20 points a game, about doubling BYU up there. Of course, they allow almost twice as many points as you do, so that's a huge number. Uh, they're allowing 600 yards uh, a game on the ground, but they do move the ball, and they love to move it through the air. They have a really developed passing game, good passing game. They do, and they, and they do a lot of the, the um, air raid type concepts, you know, in, in the passing game. and. Um, you know, we talk, I think I talked about it last week, especially on, on the show after the game, about get, creating pass rush, you know, and so uh, it's a good time for our D-line to step up after, um, you know, what we thought could have been a better um, better result last week and, and, the, and, and part of them stopping the run and creating some, some disruption in the pass game. Quarterback for ECU uh, leads the team in carries, so much like Nick Fitzgerald last week, a guy that favors uh, running it, has some RPOs obviously in the mix, and then uh, four good wide receivers, all with a thousand career yards or more. So they, they, they know what they do and, and do well, and uh, they can really put it out there as we see. That, that, that's, that's a lot of guys with uh, a thousand plus yards, and uh, you see how they do in career numbers there, reception wise, more than 100 for three of them. So you'll see a lot of this. And you didn't see maybe as much of this last week, a much more run-favored team. Yeah, and I, I think that, uh, you know, our guys are going to be tested deep and, and um, you know, our, our corners and safety is going to have to be on point. And, and the, the, the best part of defending the pass is that you're going back to our D-line, um, we have to create disruption and get to the quarterback. And uh, you saw last week that when we do that, it causes a bad throw and, and we get picks. So hopefully we can... Uh, we can match what they do uh, offensively with our defensive strengths and then find ways to, to make plays. Remember the Boise State game, uh, Cedric Wilson was kind of their go-to guy. Uh, they have a uh, player, Devon Grayson, 85, who's also kind of their, their main guy. He's among the national leaders in, uh, in receptions, and he's got six receiving scores himself this year. BYU as a team has five, so this is the guy they look for. Uh, what do you see when you see them on offense, especially, well, the, especially the, you know, this combination, Cirque to, Gray, uh, to, to Grayson? Yeah, well, I mean, we should be aware of where he's at and where he's lined up at, you know, and look at our matchups. And But I, I think we have... Uh, we have some corners that I think can, can, can compete, and uh, we've gone against, against some really good receivers uh, in our schedule, you know, and, and also in practice. So uh, it's a, it'd be a good challenge for our DBs, and uh, we're going to have to help them out in, in coverage at times. And then, you know, I, I don't think these guys you can just count on just locking them down all game long, but uh, we'll have to help out with some coverage and help out with some with some pass pressure. Their head coach, Scotty Montgomery, was the OC at Duke, and that's where Thomas Cert came from, uh, from Duke, to be there at ECU. You mentioned a moment ago, Kalani, it's a, it's a back east trip, one more time zone east, and so when you put that second time zone in, you leave usually a day earlier, right? Yeah, just to get our guys um, used to the time difference, and, and uh, you know, we're going from altitude every time we're flying to a place that's going to have some humidity, and so just get our guys used to being in the area, and then, and then um, just get them acclimated to it. And so that's, that's a, whenever we fly two time zones away, we try to go a day earlier. And that's, um, there's someone somewhere made a great scientific research find on it, and we're just going to follow it. So, You're going to go with it? Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we, I mean, it's technology, and then it's, uh, you know, using, using things that I think could help us to our, be at, at advantage for us on the, on the field, so we're going to use it. And that's, I mean, I like to be old school, but I like to also be up with technology. That's why I don't drive a horse and buggy. So, so yeah, I drove an automobile. Do you have the, do you have the latest <laughs> iPhone? No. Are you an iPhone no, guy? No, because I, I, I mean, every time I get one, they, they change the chargers and they, <laughs> they change the covers. And so I just, I won't buy into the money deal. So I'm going to just, plus I, I got, I just barely got the iPhone and then a new one just popped up. So there should be a schedule of when they're going to release them. And yeah, but mine is like, I, it's a six. Is there eight now, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm staying old school on the phones. <laughs> but, but beyond the horse and buggy, that's positive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, good. it's yeah. not like I'm playing um, Snake on, as my, one of my games on my phone. So. Nor, nor is it a flip phone. So you've got that exactly. going Exactly. Yeah. It's not predictive text. So. <laughs>
Things you learn in the show, right? Hey, whether it's Mississippi or, or Carolina, uh, BYU fans that aren't from this neck of the woods will tend to flock to wherever the nearest game is. And, and you saw them last week in Starkville. You'll see a bunch more in Greenville, I'm sure. Yeah, and we're looking forward to seeing those guys. And, and, and uh, we, we have an event when we first land to, to meet with a, with a bunch of our fans there and, and, and have dinner with them. And so I'm uh, just looking forward to spending some time and, and you know, um, being with our fans. I, I think that uh, that's a big part of what BYU football is all about is that you get to um, be close with your fans. And our players love seeing the support that they get. I mean, you don't think you're going to see a 1,000 fans in Mississippi and Starkville and and they were there, and they stayed till the end, and, and it was nice to sing the, the fight song to them, you know, and, and, and uh, to kind of mingle with them a little bit. And so um, going to this game, we get to spend a little bit more time with these fans, and I think it's good. we have a lot of alumni that are in the area too, so it'll be a lot of fun. And then uh, just, we just got to cap it off with a win. Right. Uh, next segment, we've got uh, punter Johnny Linehan joining us. Uh, Johnny, not your average college football player, is he? No, and he's... Uh, he, he's a he's a great character though, and and, and uh, I mean I, he's a great young man, and, and he's very entertaining, and I've never said that about a punter before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnny Linehan is up next as we head to break. We at Ken Garth Nissan of Orem are improving things for our customers. To see how, come visit our showroom located on University Parkway. Ken Garth. We hear Cougs after the break. He is joining us live in Studio C. Senior punter Johnny Linehan visiting with the coach and me. And he's taking your questions. This is BYU football with Kalani Satake. You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV. Presented by Siegfried and Jensen. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Hi, I'm Dave McCann with BYU TV Sports. Each season, we invite companies like yours to be a part of the BYU brand, aligning your business with respected academics and athletics. Becoming a corporate partner means you'll benefit from showcasing your products and services with game day signage, social media, radio, and TV campaigns. Whether on the field, in the stands, or on the air, BYU's here to help your brand grow. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Even though it's an individual position as a punter, it really helps the team for me to try and do it the best of my ability. The BYU TV Sports Countdown to Kickoff. BYU at East Carolina. Saturday, 6 Eastern, 4 Mountain on BYU TV. Doofy, I don't care about your problems, okay? You people make me sick. I miss Minnesota. Oh, hi, me. Next time on American Ride. Honesty of American politics has fallen into corruption. It's an era of dishonest leaders. The disregarded voice of the people rises up once again. Will a new line of presidents be able to break from the crooked ties of corruption? These men have been cutting a bad deal in a back room behind locked doors. That's next time on American Ride. Special teams pray. Thank God it made me this way. Fun, kicking, and loving every day. Early All right, welcome back inside Studio C. It is time for our player guest segment presented by Bam Bam's Barbecue, authentic to the bone. Bam Bam's. Those are the song stylings of our next guest. Uh, please be warm and receptive. For the Cougars' Kiwi kicker, he's gone from New Zealand to Zion. He is singer and comedian and punter, Johnny Linehan. Johnny, good to see you. How are you? Good to see you. 
Have a seat. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For those not not totally into uh, social media or or the ways of the special teams, explain that little ditty we're still hearing there in the background. Well, I'm not too into social media either. So <laughs> was it all the punny kicking? Is that the one yeah, going yeah. on? Oh yeah, that was my uh, my music video from last season to give us some some good karma. So it was good. <laughs> yeah. Where did the idea come from? And I, I think in the end it was for. It was for a good cause, wasn't it? Was there something to connect, to connected to it? Yeah. So yeah, it was. Yeah. So Sam Foltz from Nebraska and uh, Mike Sadler, both former punters. He was at Michigan State. They passed away in a car accident a few weeks before that, and so that was kind of the tribute to the video. Just a kind of good-hearted. They loved country music. You know, us punters are a special fraternity, special teams. We all love each other. And so I was just driving home one day and heard Hunting, Fishing, Loving Every Day by Luke Bryan and thought, man, punting, kicking kind of <laughs> fits the bill a little bit. It'd be funny, you know? Yeah. But. And uh, other special teamers around the country kind of picked up on it through social media and kind of said, that's a pretty good thing you got going there. Well, yeah. I mean, I hope you heard that. I mean, also it's heard some other things, but we'll get into <laughs> that. <yeah. laughs> Kalani said that he doesn't always say that, uh, that, that, that the punter is full of personality and all. You're, you're kind of a unique guy in, uh, you know, you are who you are. It's, you, know, you have to be yourself. But uh, you embrace the role of special teams and your role as a punter on the team, and uh, it's kind of become part of your identity uh, for, a, for, for a fan base out there. They know what you do. Yeah, for sure. I mean, no one else really cares about you, so you've got to market yourself. And so every week I get tweets saying, man, we love you, but we hope you don't play. And I'm like, oh, I'd like a few punts, you know, <laughs> it'd be, be nice. But. I'm sure a lot of folks are aware that your background in athletics here uh, was preceded by rugby. Do you miss playing the sport? Oh, yeah. Rugby will always be like my first love when I think about sport. And yeah, I miss it a lot. But playing football, especially at BYU with the team that we got, it's, it's pretty exciting. It's a great substitute. So, I mean, I miss playing rugby, but with what I've been given with the football opportunity, yeah, it's, it's hard. It'd be hard to miss football as well. Kalani, does his rugby background give him street cred as a punter? <laughs> it does, but it doesn't really help out right now on fake punts. <laughs> um, <laughs> called ones and ones that aren't called, so. <laughs> yeah. No, he's, he's a great athlete. Actually, we were just talking about it earlier. Um, it was today, right? Yeah. Where he, I, he was a great athlete, and, and it just um, thought he could play other positions too. But and w I wondered why he didn't do that, and because um, kicking wasn't like something that he did all the time when he played rugby. And he scored a lot of tries, and he was one of the best athletes on the field. And then he explain, explained that he just wanted to help out the team, and um, the game was hard to pick up right away. And, and uh, you know, but as an athlete, he's a great athlete, but. You get to hear about the things that he cares about. He cares about other people and cares about people in Houston and did a lot of things for, for charity and service. And I, I, I'm so proud to be his coach and see the things that he does and the people that he helps out. And he's always mindful of others. And so it makes sense that he's a punter and, and that he's trying to entertain everybody. And he, he sees the lighter things of everything. You know, I mean, he, he, he finds a way to, if I need to smile, I go find Johnny. And, uh, <laughs> And he's, he's, I mean, this season especially, he's been, he's been a guy that helped pick us up and, and, and understand what life's all about. And so it's just been, it's been an honor to coach him and have, you know, have his wife, Marissa, around and, mm -hmm. and their, their son, Carter, who's named after a great rugby player, right? Yeah, the best. Yeah. <laughs> and he's going to learn the game of football. And, and uh, if his mom allows him to play, <laughs> you know, then he'll be, he'll be ready to, to be a running back for us. So there we go. He'll live, he'll live his so football dream to his son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here, guys. That's awesome. Uh, if you if you had to have picked another position besides punter to have picked up and gotten better at in football, what would it have been? Kicker. <laughs> <laughs> Big stretch from punter to place kicker. Yeah. So yeah, could you have done anything else? Um, I, I'm not sure. I know. Uh, yeah, when we were speaking in the locker room after practice, Coach Sataka was, man, why why didn't you play any other position? I think if I grew up here, I, I would have loved to play something else. I would have loved. To, I think safety would have been one that I would have really enjoyed even like a receiver. Um, but I think really safety, but it's just really hard to pick up a sport and learn all the technicalities, learn all the rules and, you know, have a knack for the game. So I think as a foreigner, <laughs> it's pretty tough to learn a position unless you're like physically gifted, which I'm not really. Um, so yeah, punting and kicking is uh, yeah, how I love every day. Yeah, yeah there it is. Uh, <laughs> and, and the punt game has been really a strong point for BYU this year. There's a stat called punt efficiency out there, and they, they say it's an efficient punt if it's a net of 38 plus and or inside the 20. 
And of your 38 punts this year, BYU's 32 have been quote unquote efficient. So 84.2% efficiency, that's 20% better than the national average of 64%. That's a lot of numbers there to look at, but the bottom line is you want to accomplish something. You don't just want to kick it long or kick it far or say I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a strong leg. You want to get something accomplished and you've done that as, as a punt group. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm the one that kicks it, but there's really the 10 other guys that help make that stat, you know, and so I think uh, all the other guys, they probably have 100% punt efficiency, and it's really up to me to, to put the ball on the spot. And so, yeah, credit to the to the long snapper. That's a tough job. You know, we've had both Matt and Mitch do that. I was going to say, let's shout out those two guys right yeah. there because you've used both and both have done well. Yeah, for sure. It's tough to throw it through your legs 15 yards. I mean, I've tried it. It's really difficult. <laughs> so, yeah, credit, credit to them, you know, and yeah, so they have a different view on the world. But then also all the guys have had a, a bunch of guys. It's an upside down view on the yeah, world. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, a bunch of other guys, you know, covering. Whether we've had injuries, they've had to come in and, and made, some, made some huge plays. So, yeah, shout out to my punt team. Yeah, I feel like they're the best in the country. So. There you go. Uh, you, you, you joked about it a bit ago. We love you, but we hope you don't play. Uh, and you'd actually kind of like it if you could chill one game on the, uh, on the sidelines. Uh, the opportunities to play mean you get to do what you need to do, but you'd rather that you're not needed that much. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's nice to go in kind of if, we're, if the game's going the way we've wanted or if, if it's a nice one to pin them back and then let our defense do the thing. But then sometimes when I'm on too much, it's like, man, like – I don't want to go on again because then we're just giving the ball away. But, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a, a weird position to be in. So I try and make the most of the opportunity and just help the defense out every time I go on. Okay, question about your coach. And, Kalani, when you brought Ed Lamb to BYU, was he originally going to be your special teams coordinator? How did that decision come about? Then I want to get some thoughts from you about playing for Ed. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, I knew he was going to be my assistant head coach. And then I was going to lean on him for a lot of the things that we do as a program. And as a former head coach and having experience doing that, it was important for me to have Ed be involved, and he he really wanted to be part of the, the special teams um, uh, and, and and help him out, and so um, it just made sense that he he could take it over, and and he looked at our, our specialists, and um, he liked to call them a different name, but they're 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 guys that just that love the game and they give everything, but they're the guys that have to. It's a thankless; they just have to get the job done, and sometimes go unappreciated. But um, and then when they mess up, it's really bad. It sometimes makes headlines and <laughs> things like that. And, but um, but but bad publicity is still good, right? I mean, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, well, I mean the the fake punt. Uh, nobody's really come after and tried to block one since then. So <laughs> that's true. Yeah. How, how would you describe Ed's style and maybe the impact he's had on you and the special teamers? Yeah, Coach Lamb's unique. It's kind of fun, you know, like we as a team, we, we love, uh, love kind of his attitude and, and some of the things he says. He's a real man's man, and that's what we really <laughs> like about Coach Lamb. And, uh, and he's a music guy too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he is, but I, I don't think he approves of my, my uh, music <laughs> making. Yeah, <laughs> but no, yeah, he, he, Coach, Coach Lamb's really cool, really great guy, and uh, love his family as well. It's just awesome that they're part of here, and he's a guy that really knows football and has really helped transform our special teams. And it is a, it is a part of the game that goes unnoticed, but it is a third of the game that, that's crucial and can shift the momentum, and he's done a great job of helping swing that momentum in our favor over these last couple of years. And now your fake punts you know, make a little bit of news, and it gets talked about, but the bottom line is it does come from a place of aggressiveness. Coach Lamb is looking for opportunities to be aggressive, even with the punt teams on the field. Yeah, well, he hasn't called one this year. I called one, though, myself. <laughs> cool. Corey got in the game last week. I thought he had a chance to do something. Uh, last week there was a chance of that too maybe Corey yeah so yeah I think that's that's the cool thing about Corey being left-footed if they're bringing a lot of pressure on the right-hand side I mean let's keep him honest and go back with the lefty but yeah I'm gonna have a word with coach Lamb because I mean that's a rep that I don't get but it's okay for the <laughs> team right yeah, it's okay. if your career ends without a successful fake punt run are you gonna be okay with that or do you have to have it well my my successful fake punt my only one is against East Carolina in 2015. Oh, the one so, back in I mean, 15 here yeah, at our place, so, I mean, pre Kalani. Yeah, so I mean, but that's how many yards did you gain on that one? I th ah, was it 75? <laughs> 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 yeah. no, seven? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. did it get the job done? Yeah, got the job done. But uh, yeah, I mean, East Carolina also have had my only block punt. So I mean, we're looking not to repeat that. So it's a lot of <laughs> a lot of vengeance. So yeah, I mean. <laughs> Could be an interesting game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got uh, your Q&A with uh, Johnny Linehan coming up. Use hashtag Satake Show for your chance to hear your question on air. We'll also take questions from our studio audience right here. It's Cougar fans, kick it around with Johnny Linehan. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake.
Sure. Moving your family doesn't have to be stressful. Not when you use Bailey's Moving and Storage. For 65 years, we've moved families, companies, and busy individuals like you across town and across the country. From planning to unpacking, families have trusted Bailey's for many years to be their partner every step of the way. Whether it's local, long distance, international, an office move, or more, be sure to begin with Bailey's. The official mover of BYU Athletics, Bailey's Moving and Storage. More than just a move. I went to BYU with the intention of finishing my degree. Along the way, things got a little bit busy. I always had that idea that I was going to go back, but as a non-traditional student, I just felt that uh, that opportunity was not going to happen until I explored what BGS really offered. The BGS program gave me more flexibility and gave me the education that I wanted. As I was walking to the podium, it uh, was almost surreal. I don't regret getting my degree through BGS. I want to go to the NFL and play as long as I can, and if you're up to me, I'll play until I die. I chose exercise and wellness as a major, kind of as a backup plan for after the NFL. I wanted to do physical therapy. I don't think that I could be away from football. It just means so much to me, and it's been a big part of my life. Next time on The Story Trek, I go to a place with breathtaking vistas that people from around the world come to see and meet a woman in a small town whose secret tears her away from her family. You know, I hate to talk about it, but it is what it is. And I stumble across a man just like me. It's kind of scary. Pretty scary watching you come up to my door. Because I know, I know that guy. Yeah. I know what he does. Join me next time for The Story Trek on BYU TV. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you in part by Bam Bam's Barbecue, authentic to the bone. We take a weekly look at our Cougars in the NFL. Kyle Van Noy for the Patriots. A couple of sacks last week against the Jets. Uh, Chiefs lost their first game of the season, but Daniel Sorensen played well for Andy Reid. Ziggy Ansa. Put a pop on Drew Brees, but uh, Drew Brees and the Saints got the last laugh against Detroit. And Bronson Kofusi playing for the Ravens, getting in and making his impact felt with a solo stop against the Bears. Those are our Cougars in the NFL. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. And the Linehan family is a three-sport family at the collegiate level. Uh, you've played football and rugby. And wife Marissa was on a uh, championship soccer program here at uh, BYU. And uh, maybe just take us back and uh, let us know how you guys met originally. Oh, man. What a glorious day, <laughs> or, or, or days, I should say. No, it, we, uh, we met kind of through the athletic program. She had a huge crush on me, and of course, you know, I was, I was, I was big time. Who didn't, you know? And so, <clears throat> yeah, eventually she built up the courage to come and talk to me, and it's been happily ever after since then. <laughs> How much of that was true yeah. just now? Not much. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe none. Yeah. She's, she's, she's a heck of a soccer player. Yeah, she's great. And she, she was an awesome lefty. And I think our, our boy Carter is actually going to be left footed as well. So I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of that, but we'll see as long as he can kick it far. Yeah. Double digit goal scorer for the Cougs, by the way. Marissa was something else. And it's good to have Marissa and Carter. How old's Carter now? Carter's about seven and a half months. Yeah, but he looks like he's three months. He's pretty small, but <laughs> we want him to stay small forever. <laughs> and now, now his, he's named for whom? Daniel Carter. He's uh, yeah, probably like one of the best rugby players to play out in New Zealand. Yeah, good looking like myself, so I thought it's only fitting. Yeah. That's a rugged individual. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, it, it, does, it does hurt uh, to lose a game and then to lose a few games in a row. How do you assess kind of the team's collective mood right now and mindset as you get ready for the back half of the season? Yeah, I mean, it's really tough. I mean, right now we're all obviously D1 athletes. I don't know if we've ever lost, you know, six of anything in our lives, let alone six in a row. And so it is really hard to kind of gauge and turn around. But one thing that we're excited about, especially like seniors like myself, is this could be it, you know, in terms of football. We could have, what, like six games left. And so just making the most of every moment. And so when we think about that, it's easy to get excited, be like, man, I get an opportunity to, to play football, to represent BYU, to represent all those that have played and will play, and, and for all the you know, fans that love the program. And that, that, that kind of excites us and pumps us up. We're just hungry to kind of show what we can do, and we're disappointed that we haven't been able to do that, but we're looking forward and excited to go out there and rock and roll. 
You've got to win one before you can win six, but at least you know that winning out puts you back in the postseason. That's a pretty definite goal right now. Yeah, for sure. We're just excited to, to play good football, you know, and so hopefully we can get a good roll this weekend and then keep it going. All right, Cougar Nation's turned for some one-on-one -on -one time with uh, Johnny, and we start uh, we're gonna go right to social media, to Twitter. At Troy Beagley says, uh, given that uh, fourth and 19 is in the past, are you ever tempted to test the waters again? You have tested the waters since that time. Yeah, it wasn't as long, but it was close to the end zone. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the coaches are great. They, they trust me that, you know, if, if I see something, then I'm going to be able to take it. A lot of teams, though, they respect that, and so they usually send spies out. So all I try and do is extend the operation so that then if I have to line drive a kick, it gives our guys time to get down there. But I'm always looking. I try and grab it and take a look. But you really only have like a split second to make that decision. And then once you do, I mean, you can't really go back. So I'm always looking to try and help the team and not hurt the team. So yeah. <laughs> Approval from the coach on that one. Uh, Still Twitter. recovering from yeah. the injuries from the yeah, last decision. <laughs> Second question from Twitter from at Mormon DDS. Uh, this person says you're his favorite current player to begin with. And uh, do you do yoga to maintain flexibility as a punter? I actually took a yoga class last semester. It was a nice. school, a college class. Yeah, at, at class, yeah. I was trying to take 24 yoga classes so I could get a 4.0 and stay eligible, but <laughs> <laughs> they only let me take one. It was nice getting in the yoga pants. They feel really good, you know? Yeah, but um, I wish I was more flexible. That's one thing. So I need, to, I need to be more vigilant at my stretching. But yeah, I did take a yoga class, but I must stay. I need to get back into it. Yeah. <laughs> Kalani, any yoga in your life? No, those, <laughs> those days never came. And I hear people do it in, in a sauna, so I don't know why you keep adding misery to stuff like that. <laughs> but, um, it is painful, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I understand where, where it comes from, but I also don't like eating salads, too, so that's... <laughs> Johnny, appreciate you coming in tonight. No worries. Good segment, yeah. really good stuff. And uh, stick around for us. We're going to get to break, and as we do, we'll tell you that we at Ken Garp Honda of Orem have a new dealership. Come see our showroom floor located on University Parkway. Ken Garp Honda of Orem. We hear Cougs after the break. Your questions for the Cougars head coach from the studio audience and from Twitter. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. <laughs> You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Cars all packed. Are you ready? Yeah. You have everything you need. Yeah, I think so. Well, you forgot this. Thanks. <laughs> Hey, you can do this. Thanks, Dad. Let's go, Gerald. We're going to be late for the All game. Right. Well, heard mother. Got to go. Thank you for watching Cosmo for us this weekend. Now, remember, you only like sparkling water, room temperature. Make Come sure he wears on, a sweater. Let's go. Got to go. Go, Coops. 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 All right, sweetheart, we are going to go see you again. Go. My name is Eric Dowdle. As an artist, I've been lucky enough to travel all over the world and meet some of the greatest and most interesting people. Spending time with the locals and learning their history allows me to discover the heart of each city. Each place has a unique story to tell, and I get to tell that story in a one-of-a-kind piece of art. I hope you'll join me on Painting the Town. Don't miss the BYU Pepperdine Women's Soccer Game live Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV, your home for Cougar Sports. Aleva Hifos in the slot left, twins either side. Shotgun snap Mangamel, back reblocks. Tanner loads up, throws on the seam, and it's a touchdown to Aleva Hifo! 
That was our Nissan exciting play of the game, brought to you by Nissan, a proud partner of the BYU Cougars, Nissan, innovation that excites. We are back on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake here in Studio C. And uh, that was Tanner doing what Tanner does, and Aleva making a really nice play, keeping you guys in the game. Yeah, we just run that play every, every time. <laughs> well. Aleva's actually, he had, a, he had a kind of a breakout game for him. Uh, he was your leading receiver in Starkville, and it had kind of been a closer to the line of scrimmage guy, but he finally got deep and made something happen. It was good. Yeah, and I, I thought our receivers did a great job at, at running the routes in that game. And, um, you know, there's a lot of, lot of parts to, to, the, to the passing game and being successful in it. And it has to do with the, by having time with, up front with the O-line, but also um, getting the right reads and, and, and our, our receivers running the right routes. And I thought they did a pretty good job of it. We just we, we finally see more, um, more results and, 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 and uh, more things like you just saw with, with the level. But... We have a lot of great guys that can run, and they're fast, and they're big, and they're strong. So uh, it's ho hopefully it can work out this weekend. Tanner's completion rate in that game in Starkville was the best since uh, late in his freshman season against uh, Fresno State. All right, uh, one of the best parts of our weekly show is when we uh, get to let uh, BYU fans converse with Kalani. We've got live audience and Twitter questions ready to roll, and we'll start this week's Q&A right here in the studio. Dwayne Kinghorn is first up with uh, Coach Setake. I think Dwayne's ready to roll. All right. Thanks, hey, Coach, um, we don't participate in a conference, obviously, so we don't have the conference rankings or a conference title. And when you got some losses, right, some challenges. So how do you respond to recruits when that comes up in your recruiting dialogue? Well, we focus more on, on schedule and playing as a team and as a unit. I mean, that's, um, you, know, you, can't, you can't really wish upon, uh, for stuff that you don't have. I'd love to be undefeated right now, but that's not the case. Yeah. And, um, but I think our, we, have, we have a lot of mature guys that understand the game and understand what they, what, what, why they're here at BYU. And um, they see the schedule. They see the type of teams that we get to play. They understand we're independent. But uh, being part of this team is just more than just uh, a conference affiliation. It's, it's about what we get, get to represent, the guys that we're around, you know, the type of players that they're around, the commitment that they've made, and the lifestyle that they've committed to living, and then also the academics that are here. So uh, everyone that understands BYU and gets it, they, they understand why people want to play football on this team, why they want to be part of our program. Thanks, Dwayne. Appreciate the question. Uh, from Twitter, at Dan underscore Smith for BYU, do you trust your secondary to the extent that you can blitz more and not let the opposing comfortable, uh, a quarterback be more comfortable? I don't want to give away the game plan, but, um, <laughs> yeah, we, we always have pressure as part of our, our, um, our scheme on defense, and, and obviously you'd like to just have a four-man rush or even better three-man rush uh, get disruption and get to the quarterback, but uh, there's there's times that you have to bring more than than four and, and more than just a base defense. And uh, we have really capable coaches that understand the scheme. And Coach Tuyaki has has that in in our you know as part of our what we can do as a, as a part of our weapon as as, as a defense. And um, maybe we'll see it. I don't know. What's your maybe what's, not? Who knows? <laughs> what's your natural tendency as as a D coordinator, as a defensive mind, when it comes to pressure or aggressiveness that way? Um, I've always been really aggressive myself, and and uh, you know I, I think I think that's Tuyaki's aggressive as well, and so so, so is Coach Lamb and the, and the defensive coaches. But when you have um, when you have to make adjustments with personnel and guys that aren't that have been practicing quite a bit, um, it, it limits you a little bit. But I mean now that we're mid season. A lot of guys have got a lot of practice, and sometimes you just have to trust the guys that cover, and we'll see, you know. But I, um, I like the feast or famine type of mentality myself. Okay, we'll have more from Kalani in a second. I like the look feast. Yeah, <laughs> looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's? Try Smith's Click List. Order online, then pick up curbside at the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com slash click list for details. More Kalani Q&A after this. You are tuned to BYU Football with Kalani Satake here at BYU TV. Dinner! Mom, no, I have a date tonight. And hey, Sam. I'm... Kim? What are you... What are you doing here? I don't want you two lovebirds eating trash. So I invited her to dinner. Mom, this is my ex-girlfriend. I know, but I like her better. Plus, if you don't go out, you can save money. For the wedding. BYU Meal Plans. Make your own choices. All the great things in life happen around great food. It's not just nourishing to your body, it's nourishing to your soul. Come into downtown Provo, see the amazing things that there are here, and you'll come again and again and again. 
Provo is so beautiful. I think that you'll find that when you come to Provo, there is something for everybody now. We've got a perfect recipe for success here. We've got good food, music, a good art, and we've got a lot of great culture here. So come and have some fun in Provo. I'm not killing Silas. But what if there's no other way? There's always a way. We offer them a companion to choose for them. We offer them guaranteed joy. And they give us this. It's about what you want, what you hope for. Losing that is worse than death. for a long time. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is presented by Ken Garf Honda of Orem, a proud supporter of BYU and the Cougar community. We hear Cougs. It is our final Q&A segment of the night for Coach Satake. It's always hashtag Satake Show to get your questions in each week. We also take them here in our live studio audience, and he is live. He is Reed Bates on with Coach Satake. Hey, Reed. Hi. Hey, Coach. Uh, so during recruiting, how do you sell, quote, unquote, the um, honor code to those that may not have it as part of their lives as a normal basis? Well, I think a lot of people, um, if you're going to reach your goals, as a football player and, and academically and as, I mean, there's a lot of people that have academic uh, goals and individual goals and a lot of them have to do with the NFL, you know, and, and uh, having a, a great life when the NFL doesn't work or something like that. And so we focus on the fact that if you want to get somewhere, you're going to take hard work and sacrifice. And um, usually the things that the honor code keeps you away from are, are the biggest distractions in, 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 in the young man reaching those goals. And so. It uh, just makes it a lot easier, you know, for and a lot of there's a lot of a lot of people that live that lifestyle already. You know what I mean? So uh, we don't hide from the honor code. It's it's part of what makes BYU great. And uh, I also think that it in order for you to be a great athlete, you have to sacrifice something and then and, and you have to work hard. And those things make it a lot easier. I mean, none of us ever thought that we would be a murderer someday. So we somewhere along the line, we decided we weren't going to kill anyone. Right. And, and, and so if you have that kind of lifestyle with the honor code, it, it's pretty simple to just follow if you, if you live your life the right way. And, and uh, I'm not saying that people don't make mistakes, but it's what the atonement's all about. I mean, BYU's, I guess a misconception about BYU and that um, it doesn't help you. It, it, we, we teach the atonement uh, through Christ and, 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 and his love and sacrifice. And, and we ask others to sacrifice in their life to achieve achieve uh, you know the, the light of Christ and then help us share it with others. And so that's what we try to do. And, and I think it works out. Reed, thank you for the question. Appreciate that. Uh, Twitter for at Diana Allen, and she asks, what improvements did you see last week against MSU that you look to seeing more of this week against ECU? Uh, well, we saw some good drives, but we, you know, I'd like to see. So if we're talking uh, the, from different phases, um, obviously you'd like to see the punter not really be on the field much, you know, and, and when he does, he no, should... No, nothing against Johnny. We love Yeah, him. but when he you is know. on the field, he should be a threat to fake it and also to <laughs> kick it. Um, but, um, but, you know, the most important thing for our offense is to just sustain drives, get first downs, get, get positive yards, and, and take it one play at a time. I think everyone is really impatient and want to make the big play right away. And it, it, it happens with you being on the field more than anything and, and uh, getting those reps. And then just sometimes it takes a little bit more time. And... Uh, the goal is just to get more yards that, that first down, try to get four yards every time and, and maybe break a tackle and pop a big one, you know. So uh, defensively, just got to get out of third downs. That's been a, a big problem for us, and uh, stopping the run has been important. But part of the run when you go against East, East Carolina is, is, is stopping the uh, quick throws. That's an extension of their run game, you know. So uh, being able to, to lock that up, and, and then we have to take some chances and take some risks if we're going to get some rewards. All right, closing thoughts from Kalani coming up next. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. We're back right after this. 
You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Hi, I'm Dave McCann with BYU TV Sports. Each season, we invite companies like yours to be a part of the BYU brand, aligning your business with respected academics and athletics. Becoming a corporate partner means you'll benefit from showcasing your products and services with game day signage, social media, radio, and TV campaigns. Whether on the field, in the stands, or on the air, BYU's here to help your brand grow. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Next time on American Ride. Honesty of American politics has fallen into corruption. It's an era of dishonest leaders. The disregarded voice of the people rises up once again. Will a new line of presidents be able to break from the crooked ties of corruption? These men have been cutting a bad deal in a back room behind locked doors. That's next time on American Ride. Social media, hashtags, internet, what? These are some super confusing things, but all you need to know is that Studio C is on YouTube and we are always releasing new videos. Subscribe to see all the cool stuff we're gonna be doing next. Find Studio C on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Connect with us, we'll connect with you. Here to go to the lake, alone. The obelisk controls the force field, Ezra, not me. And tell the obelisk to let me out. Don't you see? The obelisk is protecting you. Whose side are you on, Abram? The side that doesn't want to see you get killed. You're nothing to them. Nothing to the obelisk. Nothing to the makers. All they want is a tool. What does a weapon do? Watch Extinct on BYU TV. I don't think that I could be away from football. It just means so much to me. And it's been a big part of my life. The BYU TV Sports Post Game, BYU at East Carolina, Saturday after the game on BYU TV. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is presented by Ken Garf Volkswagen of Orem, a proud supporter of BYU and the Cougar community. We hear Cougs. BYU at ECU game day starts on the radio at 3 o'clock Mountain, 5 o'clock Eastern, one hour later at C2K. Countdown to kick off on BYU TV. See the game on CBS Sports Network. Hear it on the radio, BYU Sports Network, and then post-game radio, post-game TV. It's all coming up. Final segment of our weekly show. The Cougars two days away from voyaging to Greenville. BYU at ECU. Kalani, you're banged up right now a little bit, but it's all hands on deck to try and get uh, the team uh, figured out, get this thing turned around. Yeah, I mean, everybody's ready to go, and, and that's all that matters right now is this game. And uh, the stuff in the past doesn't matter, and, and the games in the future don't matter. It's all that, all that matters is just empty, emptying the tank and, and then giving it all on Saturday. Got to win. All right, BYU at ECU, and let's go Cougs. That'll do it for this week's show. Join us next week by saving your seats at BYUCougars.com slash Satake Show next Monday or Tuesday. For Johnny and for Kalani, I'm Greg Rubel. We'll see you next week for BYU Football with Kalani Satake live in Studio C. You have everything you need. Yeah, I think so. Well, you forgot this. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> hey, you can do this. Thanks, Dad. Well, heard my mother. Gotta go. Thank you for watching Cosmo for us this weekend. Now remember, you only like sparkling water, room temperature. On, Make sure he wears go. his sweater. Gotta go. Go, 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 go. Now we are going to go see a game. I see the road less traveled. Run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with plastic dudes. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine shining.